Now to the close up look inside that daring 11th hour U.S. rescue mission that ended in the death of an American hostage in Yemen. And ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, is here. And Brian, they nearly pulled this mission off. That's right, Paula. New details this morning reveal just how agonizingly close the U.S. rescue attempt came to succeeding. It was only at the last minute as one of the guards went outside to relieve himself that the U.S. rescue team was spotted. It was a high-risk mission to begin with, under an almost full moon and with little element of strategic surprise. You say yes, you, you go forward with an operation like this because you have no other choice. Some 40 commandos from the elite SEAL Team 6 landed about six miles away from the Al-Qaeda hideout to avoid being detected by the aircraft noise. The team made its way on foot to within 100 yards of the objective when one of the Al-Qaeda guards who had gone outside to relieve himself spotted the U.S. team. What ensued was a fierce 10-minute gun battle, during which both the 33-year-old American photojournalist Luke Summers and a South African teacher and aid worker, Pierre Corky, were shot by one of the Al-Qaeda guards. One of them died from his wounds, being flown out to a U.S. Navy ship offshore. The other died in the ship's medical facility. Now U.S. officials vow to track down those responsible. This is a, a despicable crime. We will be relentless in our efforts to bring to justice those who have caused this death. Some already have been brought to justice. U.S. officials say most but not all of the Al-Qaeda guys were killed, but some were able to escape, Paula. They're right. looking for those right now. Yeah, they came just so agonizingly close. Brian, thank you. Thank you, Brian. We're going to turn now to a monster storm, one of the most powerful on the planet this year. It's a typhoon sweeping across the Philippines right now. Millions in the path of this storm, many of them rushing into emergency shelters or seeking higher ground. And ABC's Hamish McDonald is right there. Hamish? Dan and Paula, good morning. This is what it looks like when the typhoon slams into the coastline here in the Philippines. This community has done everything it can to prepare for this. There's not much that will stand in the way of this storm. The eye of the storm is sweeping across the Philippines this morning. In its way, homes, shops and families. Trees are being pushed to their limits as fierce winds lash the coastline. This man was rescued by coast guards after floating at sea for hours. Millions have now been forced to evacuate to shelters like this. Hundreds of people are crammed into converted classrooms to wait out the storm. Overnight, as the typhoon edged its way towards this village, we went in search of those who'd been left behind. Just spotted some people. They must be the last family left on this whole strip. Let's go and see. 67 year old Samuel says he's seen this all before. In his village, he is the last man standing. But not for long. Time to get out. Time to go. Yeah. Officials are here to force evacuations. As this storm passes through, the real work will begin. They'll need to find out what damage has been done and try to rebuild. Dan and Paula. <sighs> Hamish, thank you, and please stay safe. A wild scene out there. Let's get it over to Rob now for a look at where exactly this storm is heading. Rob, what are you seeing? Dan, it's heading towards Manila. This shot taken from the International Space Station, and we're looking uh, south and east. Those bright lights, that is the city of Manila, and those clouds beginning to encompass uh, that bright lit city, and we're going to look for the winds to begin to pick up there as we go in through time. Uh, the, the winds from the storm itself had decreased in intensity somewhat, but it's still the equivalent of a Category 2 storm, and right now it's still over open water. So it continues to batter these islands. It'll make inroads towards Manila tonight and tomorrow morning, probably as a Category 1 storm. But it's such a slow mover, not only the winds and the storm surge, but an incredible amount of rain, flooding and mudslides, still an issue for the next two days.